And sometimes we just need to be reminded of the faithfulness of our God. We need these continual reminders that he is faithful. How many people know he's faithful? Yeah. Right, but he's not just faithful, he's faithful and true. He keeps his word. You know, sometimes if you're anything like me, you can begin to believe that God's promises are actually my promises. <laughs> and then I can begin to put all this pressure on myself to try to fulfill something that was never mine. And what happens is I begin to reinterpret the text. And when it doesn't happen, when I think it should, how I think it should, the way I think it should, or with the people that I think it should, or in the timing that I think it should, not only do I get discouraged, but watch this, I begin to doubt God's faithfulness. And I begin to make God like me. <laughs> My heart's desire is to be faithful. My heart's desire is to be true. This is something that through relationship, through intimacy, through transparency, through community, watch out, through humility, that I'm learning to cultivate. It's something that's being developed in me. But I can't stand before you today and tell you with an honest and open heart that that is something that I'm always able to uphold. And it's taken me a lot of years to be able to say that because sometimes in saying that, shame would try to get on me. But I realize I can never be God. But I can be real good at being me, <laughs> even with all of my limitations, even with my quirks. How many people in the house have quirks? Being quirky is part of being human. Amen. Matter of fact, the longer I'm with Pastor Jackie, I, her quirks used to quirk me. Now I think they're kind of cute. <laughs> See, faithfulness, uh oh, faithfulness has a way of taking the things that irritate you. And they have a way of winning you to something bigger than you. Because a lot of times, quirks can be the things that keep us praying. <laughs> the problem is, if you're anything like me, you're praying for them to change. And God is like, you don't even know it. But I'm using that quirk to change you. The church said I was with you till you said that, Pastor. <laughs> Because, see, I learned how to intercede. Watch this. I learned how to intercede by trying to change people through prayer. Oh, you didn't hear me. <laughs> I got a master's in coming to God about you. <laughs> oh, I got a doctorate in coming to God about my children, coming to God about my coworkers, coming to God about my job. I have graduated in that course. And I had no idea that Father was like, yeah, you think you graduated, but I'm going to graduate you. And through that exchange, because nothing's more frustrating than praying about someone or something that is not either changing or getting worse. As a matter of fact, for some of us, that's confirmation why we should exit stage left. Because <laughs> surely God's not in it if it's not changing or getting worse. Because God is only in it if it's changing the way I want it to, right? That surely God is in that. <laughs> surely, surely. <laughs> And to have to be broken and to have to learn how to live out of a place where as I'm praying about this stuff, the Lord says, well, can I talk to you about me? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Go on and tell me how great I am. <laughs> how great I am. 
Sing with me how great I am. And all will see how great, how great I am. Y'all not, not like, yeah, yeah, y'all not like me. Okay, y'all not like me. But if we just keep coming, if the, and if we let there, because time and a lack of change has a way of breaking us like nothing else. See, it's really being like Jesus. Because Jesus dealt with a bunch of people that weren't trying to change. And he kept blessing them. He kept, he kept casting out demons. <laughs> yeah, 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 y'all don't want to talk. He kept cleansing the lepers. He kept raising people from the dead. Knowing that once they got what they wanted, they would be undecided about what he wanted. Oh. What do you do when you're dealing with somebody that only wants what they want, but are undecided about what you want? <laughs> Come on, tell the person next to you, say, I thought I wanted to be like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but see, this is the Jesus in the scripture, not the Jesus in our head, the Jesus that we preach about, or the Jesus of our experience. <sighs> That's why we lean into his faithfulness, not our failures. To keep looking at my failures is to denigrate his faithfulness. But even in that place, he'll meet us, won't he? Amen. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness today. <laughs> we thank you for doing what only you can do. We embrace the fact that we have limits. We embrace the fact that we're not perfect. But we also embrace the fact that you are perfectly in love with us, that you are perfecting us, and you said that we can have confidence in this, that he who began a good work. Say it's a good work. It's a good work. Come on, it hurts, but it's a good work. Come on, it's hard, but it's a good work. <laughs> it's not easy, but it's a good work. He said he would carry it on to completion. Sometimes I keep putting in me <laughs> We'll carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Amen. How many people know the Lord is doing a good work in us? Come on, say that. Say, the Lord, the Lord is, doing is doing a good work, a good work. in me. Come on, say it one more time. Say, the Lord, the Lord is, is right, now, right now, whether I feel like it or not, whether I feel like it or not he is doing, he is doing a, good a good work in me. In me. Come on, one more time. Say, the Lord, the Lord is, is currently, currently right, now, right now in my situation, in my, situation, in my circumstances, in, my circumstances in, in the midst of everything I'm going through. He is doing a good work in me. And I just believe he's going to carry it on to the day of Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit, I give you permission to work in me and through me to bless this body of believers today. By the power of your spirit and by the power of your word, as you give us more understanding about what it is that you're walking us through in our everyday lives. You're concerned about the big things and the little things. The things that irritate people, you're concerned about those. So even when people ignore us <laughs> or don't want to hear about it, we have a father that's always open. And so I thank you for this time of exchange and impartation that your people would leave encouraged, that our community online would leave strengthened and edified today 
by the power of your spirit. Thank you for answering questions. Thank you for confirming. Thank you for healing. Thank you for setting free. In Jesus' name we pray. We say thank you and amen. Amen, amen. Good morning, community. I'm so happy to see everybody today. Amen. I love you guys. I know you guys love me. Amen. Right? Amen. Right, amen. Amen. Hey, hey listen. I'm, listen, listen. Listen, y'all don't want to mess with me because I'm good at interpreting stuff, see? You can tell me you don't love me. Here's what I hear. I really love you. So, yeah, listen. I've already worked that out by faith. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, if you turn to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, amen. The vision of this house is training and equipping everyday people yes. to demonstrate God's kingdom in their everyday life. The mission of this house is populating the earth with mature ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador is someone who simply represents the interests of someone else. God does something in us so that he can do something through us. Amen? I just want to talk for a few moments today about locating us for destiny. Locating us for destiny. Amen? Luke chapter 22, verses 20 through 32. Locating us for destiny. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me <laughs> is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to the man that betrays him. I love this, verse 23. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. <laughs> Nobody raised their hand and said it, it, it could be me. Right, right, right. They said, I knew I couldn't trust Bean. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had something in my spirit against Sister Tosh. I, I knew it. <laughs> These are the ones that Jesus is going to leave the vision of the church to. <laughs> Say process. <laughs> the interesting thing about this is all of this takes place in the middle of a conversation. And in this conversation, Jesus is telling them about what's going to happen in the future. And he tells them that in their future, there's going to be a betrayal. I don't want to know that in my future. <laughs> right, keep, 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 that, keep that to yourself, Lord, right? They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. They are getting it lit. Right. Say everyday people. Everyday people. Say real people. real people. See, I love the Bible because, listen, the Holy Spirit does it hide how we really are. As a matter of fact, he takes pressure off of us by showing us how our brothers and sisters are so that when we have some similarities, we won't shrink back. When we read this, we should be able to relate to this without feeling shame. Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be <laughs> like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. I love how Jesus just keeps teaching 
not beaten. Their motives aren't right. They are not even open to the fact that I could be the one to betray him. They're arguing about who's the greatest, and Jesus doesn't pull out the rebuke stick. He just keeps teaching. What a great lesson for parenting. <laughs> How many of us would be different if we were parented this way? Now, watch this. Guess what? Now God is trying to reparent us, but some of us are used to the way that we were parented, that even when we hear this, we hear it from how things used to be and not how things are. You know, some of us could be listening to this and we could think that Jesus is yelling because that's what we're raised in and that's not even in the text. See, we read things into the text that are not even in the text. And then we say that this is what the text said. <laughs> and it's not even in the text. It's in the text called my experience, my heart, my mind, and my expectation. <laughs> it's not in the Bible. <laughs> and don't let it be an, an exclamation point because, Carlton, we think we gotta, we think we gotta put a little base on it to make a point. <laughs> Verse 27, for who is greater the one who is at the table or the one who serves. Is it not the one at the table, but I am among you as one who serves. Notice, notice he almost uses a parable to disarm their hearts. He says, listen, now who's the greatest, you guys? And they know it's him, and to not make them feel bad, he uses wisdom to disarm them. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? Watch this. But I am among you as one who serves. In the middle of being betrayed. Uh-oh. Let's go. Okay. In the middle of them not being able to recognize that it could be me, and in the middle of them arguing over how great they were, Jesus said, I'm not going to rebuke you. I'm not going to beat you. I'm just going to keep serving you. Because if I keep serving you, I can win your heart. Watch this. Not just to serving, but I can win your heart to me. And if I can win your heart to me and there is an exchange and you get my heart, then everybody else has a chance. Because you won't serve to get something. You'll serve because you got something. I wish you heard me today. See, if you're anything like me, I've been through seasons where externally I'm serving. I am. I'm serving. And internally, I'm like, does anybody see me? <laughs> does anybody care? <laughs> One of the things that I admire about my wife is how she puts up with me and how she serves me even when I am on stank. Now, I know it shocks some of us to think Pastor Mark gets on stank. Never here, because <laughs> here's where the anointing is. Oh, but sometimes. And she's been serving me for a lot of years. She was, no, 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 no. She was serving me before I was saved. She already told me. She said, now listen. <laughs> She said, now listen, I love you, brother, but I want to tell you something, okay? I want to be clear, right? So there's, so there's no questions. You, you try to leave now if you want to. <laughs> it's going to be some problems, okay? All that I've been through with you, I wish somebody would try to swoop in. Whoosh. See, for some of us, you, for some of us, Jesus is just doing ministry. <clears throat> for some of us, Jesus is just preaching and teaching. 
And when we get into the serving part of Jesus, we want somebody to do it for us until we get it instead of doing it for others until they get it. He's just teaching. He's just talking. Say he's just talking. Now, I know my voice is loud because I'm getting excited because this is good, but I, but I promise, I promise, I promise he wasn't raising his voice. I promise he was just talking. Because when you understand the authority that you have, you understand that it's not based upon your pitch. You also understand that it doesn't make a difference if people don't listen because whether they listen or not, that's no indication of your authority. This will help us rest in our relationships. My mother used to yell at me because <laughs> she, she thought I had an audible problem. She didn't know I had a heart problem. <laughs> Oh, and she, and she used to yell, and eventually, you know, I would just check out, right? Wah, 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 wah. And, and the more I check out, the louder she'd yell. Because she thought I had an auto. I heard what she was Yeah, I heard her. I heard her the first ten times she called me and told me what to do. But my heart was on lockdown, so you, you can yell all you want to. Ah. I'm like, No. And sometimes we think the louder we are, the more boisterous we are, or the more silent we are. Because see, they're extremes, loud and proud, or silent and missing. And neither one of them really represent authority. <laughs> but I am among you as one who serves. Now, can I, can I say this, okay? How many people know that they don't get anything he's saying, but he still keeps talking? Because he's imparting into where they're going, not just where they are. Sometimes you just got to keep talking even when it looks like they're not listening. You know, one of, the, one of the best moments that I have with my sons is when they tell me that I still hear you talking to me. I say, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I don't know if they always listen. And the truth is, they don't have to always listen to me because now that they're adults, they get to choose. Yes. Yes. If they still listening to me at this age, I got to go back and look if I did everything right. I mean, Amen. Amen. hopefully I set you up to teach you to choose to listen. Watch this. Not that you have to listen. Because <clears throat> if you're not choosing to listen, you're in bondage. <laughs> my wife doesn't have to listen to me uh, who, who am I <laughs> I don't have to listen now I probably should <laughs> I didn't say that <laughs> but who am I to just yeah you gonna listen to me <laughs> how's that working But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 31, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. All of you. Now he announces that the season has just changed. Simon, now it looks like he's just talking to Peter. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. So they were all coming into a sifting season. Listen, listen, sometimes when Jesus is talking to us just through conversations. He is dropping nuggets that we need to hear. I know it's harvest time. 
But guess what happens in harvest time? You do reap. But guess what you reap? Uh-oh. <laughs> I'll leave that there, <laughs> okay? Because I can't change my harvest now. Pastor said it's harvest time, so I'm going to be blessed. Well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Depends on what you've been sowing. <laughs> And you got to take this, say, so you got to take this harvest. <laughs> now, if I'm not getting a harvest that I like, then that means in the spring, I got to plant something different. But I got to receive this harvest so that I can look at what I planted. Not what other people have planted, because I choose my harvest, not other people. So he says, I'm bringing you into a... Now, he's locating us for destiny. I'm bringing you all into a sifting season. But I have prayed for you all, but particularly you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. In other words, some things are getting ready to jump off. And I'm going to allow some things to happen to purify your heart and to make you more like me, which means I won't be the only one that gets betrayed. <sighs> which means when I sign up to be like Jesus, I'm signing up to have some of the same experiences like he had, but I'm at Burger King trying to pick what the experiences are gonna be. But here's the problem, if I pick the experiences, I might not get the godly results. So I have to let Father pick the experiences that I wouldn't pick. Because I'm not picking, I'm not signing up to be betrayed. Maybe y'all are more spiritual than me. Maybe, maybe y'all have more maturity than I do. But I'm not signing up for that. But that's okay, because Father said, because I'm not asking you what you're signing up for. If you trust me, if you let me, I will even let betrayals work on our behalf to make us more like my son. But I have prayed for you. I've prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Now, I want your faith in you to fail. I don't want your faith in me to fail. That's why I'm praying for you. I'm not praying and telling you I'm going to keep stuff from happening to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep you while stuff is happening to you. I'm not going to stop everything from getting to you, I'm just not going to let it destroy you. I'm going to use it to develop you. Because if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. But I don't like suffering. <laughs> That's something else I'm not, I'm not signing up for betrayal. <laughs> and I am not... <laughs> Signing up for suffering. Right, <laughs> so if that's what it takes to be like Jesus, I've already checked out. So I'm good. <laughs> and Father was like, that's okay because I'm man, i not dealing with you. I know, I know who I'm dealing with. <laughs> and when you have turned back, strengthen your brother's and your sisters. He didn't say if you turn back. He said when you turn back. Which means you're going to come out of this with the ability because you're going to have an abundance of experiences that I will use to strengthen other people who have not been through what you've been through. But what the enemy wants to do is he wants to put shame on you in the experience so that when we come out, we don't want to talk about it. 
But if we won't talk about it, other people won't be strengthened. Because they can't just know that God is strong. They've got to see how he strengthened me through what I was going through so that they will believe that God will strengthen them too. But we can't boast in our ability. That's why I want your faith in you to fail, but I got to balance it because your faith in you and your faith in me are kind of intertwined and I got to separate them. Because if you're anything like me, sometimes you think you got faith in me and it's really faith in me. (laughs) So Jesus reveals the future. Say, Jesus reveals the future. The second thing Jesus does is he reverses mindsets. He knew that when he told them that one of them was going to... Now, <laughs> come on, man. Just say who it is. Don't, <laughs> don't mess all of us up. Just say it's Josh Southern so we can say, I knew it. <laughs> Jesus knows we are fragile. <laughs> say, say, say fragility. <laughs> Come on, he knows we fragile. No, we can't take too much heat. So what does he do? He says, one of (laughs) y'all. And then all of us are like, yeah, one of (laughs) y'all. And then we say, I'm just being like Jesus. But he does that so that the drama that's in our heart can come out. Because the reason they start arguing about who's the greatest is because they're convinced that they wouldn't betray him. Mm. So it's easy to say, I'm the greatest, because I would never do that. Anybody ever been in that place? I would never do that. And then you do it, and now you go from I would never do it to I can't believe I did it. (laughs) And in this video age we live in today... (laughs) Man, I wasn't even at work that day. (laughs) And he's trying to really give them a serving mindset, which means he's got to break a selfish mindset. But he does it through a conversation. Again, he's just talking, right? He's not yelling, he's just talking. Say, so say, we're just talking today. We're just, we're just talking. Jesus reveals the future. Jesus reverses mindsets. And Jesus reports the season that they're coming into. Now, for all of us like me that like to rebuke the Lord, yeah. right? Because God would tell us we're coming in a season. No, that's the devil. <laughs> no, that wasn't the devil. <laughs> But I don't know if they heard that he would pray for them. I think there was so much going on in their lives that they latched on to what they thought they needed and they missed what they really needed. Are we listening to listen or are we listening to respond? What season are we in, and who told us? Are we listening to listen, or are we listening to respond? Because if you read the other Gospels, Peter, the greatest, said, Lord, all the rest of them are weak and fragile. But me, I'm going to stick with you. He said, okay, Peter, let me go on and tighten you up, okay? Before the rooster crows, (laughs) three times. You're going to deny me. Peter said, no, I'm not. He said, yes, I am. Peter said, no, I'm not. He said, okay. That's why he cut the servant's ear off. He wasn't, perfect. he wasn't protecting the Christ. He was protecting his confession. Did we hear what Jesus said or did we go on the defensive? 
We just we just talking. How do we mix faith with what Jesus is saying versus what we may hear? Are we even aware of all the voices that are talking? Are we listening to listen or to just respond? What season are we in? Who told us? Did we hear what Jesus said or did we go on the defensive? How do we mix faith with what Jesus is saying versus what we may hear? He said, I prayed for you that your faith might not fail. And when you turn back, see, we need to latch on to that. Yes, yes, yes. In other words, you're going to make it through. Yes. Say, I'm going to make it through. This is what we need to hear. <laughs> Say, I'm going to make it through. Say, I'm going to make it through. Now watch the purpose. Strengthen your brothers and your sisters. In other words, we're going to come out of this thing thinking less about ourselves and more about other people. And instead of blasting people, we're going to be able to bless people. Say, locating us for destiny. Father, I thank you for the power of your word. I thank you that as your word goes forth today, that it would do work in us and that your kingdom would come, that you would be glorified. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for locating us through the gift of a conversation. And as we hear you, I pray that we are encouraged that we can take another step in a time in the world where there's betrayal, where there are people boasting in their greatness, and where nobody is really ready to take responsibility. I thank you that the heart of a servant rises to the top and is used to bless others, even when it hurts us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.